Hey everybody, this is David with Mayhem Laser again. Want to do a quick update video. Uh, once again, this video probably won't be that great because I'm taking it with my phone and I don't do video editing. <laughs> I'm a welder by day. Uh, anyways, first of all, I want to say thanks to everybody who's been ordering lids and to all the people who are coming to Florida and buying lids. I will see you guys down there. Um, so real quick. Those of you who are ordering individual lids, um, if you saw from my first video, some of y'all may think that I just pick crappy lids. I don't do that. I send you guys lids out of my better stack. Uh, that still does not mean they are perfect. This is the bottom of a lid. Um, but some of them will be really clean. Um, I try to pick, like I said, the best ones I can. I can't always do that uh, as I don't have the whole warehouse of lids with me. I just have what I keep here available uh, here but anyways um, I do the individuals I pick out from the best stack they are not prepped they're not glued they do come apart they're tongue and groove they're made to come apart which that one's hard because I'm trying to do it with one hand this one's already apart um, but they're a lot easier to sand and prep because as I said they're not all perfect nor are they perfectly flat um, you won't get a whole lot of them like that. Sometimes you get lucky with a pallet and we'll get a huge stack of just pristine lids. It doesn't always happen. We don't touch the lids that we ship out on the pallets. Uh, those lids come into the warehouse. They stay wrapped up and they get shipped right back out. There's 160 lids on a pallet. Um, and then as I said, I ship individually from here at $8 a lid uh, plus shipping. Also, shipping just went up. Some of you who do a lot of UPS or FedEx may know this already. Um, anything, it used to be anything over 70 pounds got additional shipping and handling fees attached to it. UPS and FedEx have both dropped that weight down to 50 pounds. And four lids, which is what fits in my boxes, um, normally weighs between 50 and 52. So I've been trying to shave off some of the weight one way or another to get you guys the better prices but they did also give me uh, a discount where I get between 30 and 46 percent off depending on how many boxes I ship out a month uh, that's obviously depending on how many you guys order from me anyways once again they're not all perfect I do try to pick the better ones that still doesn't mean they're going to be perfectly clean and I've had some follow-up questions on how I clean them and prep them uh, so the first thing I do um, is I get my lid. Um, this one's pretty nice and flat anyways. They're not always like that. Um, but a lot of these now that I've made a little bit of money, I'll run them, break them in half, which you don't have to actually break them because once again, they're tongue and groove. I'll split them in half and run them through a planer. Um, I don't take off a whole lot. I only do enough to get the main part of this off that way I don't have to do so much sanding and I also only plane the front if you try to plane the backs there are gonna be uh, unlevel edges too and if you start trying to plane both sides <laughs> you're gonna end up with like a half inch piece of wood by the time you're done they start out at an inch and a quarter so anyways I run them through a planer if you don't have one of those um, I would suggest getting one of these this is what I was using before I still use it um, it works great. Get some real rough grit sandpaper. Make you a little jig to hold the lid together or just put a clamp on each end and go to town. This right here will knock off a whole lot of stuff really quick. And then, you know, I finish it with the orbital sander after that. So clean the fronts, whether you use a belt sander or planer. Once you do that, flip them around. A lot of people have asked, what is the easiest way to get all this black off? So, what I use is, it's called a paint eater. You can get it in the paint section pretty much anywhere. Ace, I think Walmart even carries them. Not a hundred percent sure on that. Um, but they're made to take like paint off wood and cabinets, metal, stuff like that. They work great. I use these to get all the ash off the back. Goes on a little angle grinder I have. Or if you're at the paint section at Lowe's, they actually have their own little tool that these screw onto. It works both ways. 
but these will take all that black off, ash. I mean, you can see just with me rubbing it super fast. No more ash. It's still going to be black. <laughs> the bottoms are charred. They're going to stay black unless you really want to sand them or try to plane them. That's your call. Um, I don't mess with it. The only reason I would see two mess with it is if you were doing a double-sided one, which a lot of people will just take two lids, sandwich them together, however you want to do it. Um, so anyways, paint eater on the back works great. You can use a wire brush. I've heard of some people using a sandblaster, or not a sandblaster, a uh, pressure washer. And they'll take and just line up a whole bunch of these outside and people have staves like the side pieces of the barrels because I have a pallet of those too and sell those here. Uh, they'll take and pressure wash them all and just let them dry for a little bit and it saves them a lot of time. I wouldn't really recommend that. You're getting the wood wet again. Not that it's not already still somewhat wet. <laughs> Those of you who have ordered lids from me definitely know that there's still moisture in them because you've opened the box and had an awesome smell of whiskey and bourbon. It's pretty strong. Anyways, get all that stuff off. Uh, previously, I was gluing them. I do still glue some of these. Depends on the use that they're going to do. Uh, somebody kind of turned me on to the backing strips and showed me how they do it and it works out awesome You take a backing strip these things are normally between 21 and 22 inches they're not perfect circles although they look like it they're normally mm, maybe a quarter inch off around but um take a backing strip flip these things over and get you a little cheap you know i just bought a little porter cable one this is a basically a stapler for crown molding and you can get like an inch and a quarter staple staple it from like i said the back side um, at least a quarter inch thick piece of wood and you can just pop 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 and it's real quick you don't have to wait for glue it works out great uh, i've been doing that now it saves me a whole lot of time if you are going to glue them, I still recommend the tight bond. It's water, waterproof, works for interior and exterior. So you never know what people are going to do with these things that you make. Um, last question is, I have a lot of people asking is, how do you mark them? You know, not, I'm a welder and fabricator, so I've got a lot of experience with doing this. Not everybody does. And there's probably things in here that, you know, even doing cups that I probably still don't do the easiest way. I probably do it the hardest way possible hopefully I'll learn better in Florida but uh, anyways all I do to find the center of these to where I can engrave them is I just get two by four anything that you know is pretty straight I clamped it to my table now obviously I've already got this lid prepped just to show you guys um, but what I'll do is even if the tape is on here is I'll fold this tape over and see how wide the lid is and all you gotta do is keep this square with your piece of wood, move it up and down, and you can see my biggest part is pretty much at 21 and 3 eighths. So I will split that in half, um, split it in half, make my mark, and then, you know, once I make my mark, I'll move this up and keep it square with the wood. I'll move this up make a mark again move it down also once again keeping it square make another mark and then i turn it sideways and draw a straight line which i'm this isn't going to be centered because i'm just doing this for you guys's purposes but make a line and then i just turn it sideways once again sorry this video is crappy i'm taking it with my phone but turn this sideways and I will move the lid until the line matches up with my square again. Once it does, do the same thing. Find your widest or your widest part should be there anyway. So 21 and a quarter, divide that in two, it'd be 10 and 5 eighths. I would make another mark at 10 and 5 eighths. And you know, same thing again. Now you've got your center. If you're losing, using light burn and you know how to use it, there's a button you can click and move your laser head to the center of the barrel lid. 
with the click of a button. But anyways, I put it on center and go to town. Uh, just a side note, also, I engrave these from side to side, meaning across the grain. I think it turns out better. You know, this these are real wood. They are white oak, <laughs> solid white oak. Um, but just like any other wood, you know, this is pretty dense, but you can still have some soft spots in it. So if you engrave with the grain, some of it may end up going a little bit deeper. Plus, if this isn't perfectly level, you know, you're going to get a little bit differences anyways. So my opinion, engrave them across the grain. It turns out better. I think it's a cleaner look. I've done enough of them that, you know, I think I know. Once again, that's my opinion, though. Um, but, yeah, so there's my update. Hopefully that answers any and all other questions. I want to thank everybody again for who's been ordering from me. And sorry this video is so long. One last thing. Some of you guys see some of my lids in the background. I had a lot of questions after the first video. Um, I do not have a license to do any logo stuff. Uh, this Jack Daniels lid is my personal lid. I just still have yet to hang it up. Um, and these are for my friends. Uh, one of my best friends is getting married. And Ohio is his state. Notre Dame is hers. Um, I just thought it was a cool wedding gift. You, without a license, cannot do this kind of stuff and sell it. You can do it for your own or for friends and family without getting paid. Um, use common sense. I mean, you guys know you're not supposed to steal logos, especially to make money off of it. I don't. I'm not even a football person. I could care less. I don't have time. Um, nothing against sports or anything. I just, like I said, I don't have the time for it. I work a day job and do this on the side and sell and ship you guys lids. Um, but anyways, once again, if you have any other questions, let me know. There are 160 lids on all of our pallets. And once again, our pallets are untouched by any of us in the warehouse. So you will have some bad lids. You might get some that are really rough. Or, let's see if there's one in here. One of these in here has like a big gouge in it. You're not going to get 160 perfect lids. Just be wary of that. But there's also other uses for them and uh for you guys who don't have lids in your area which is most of you ordering them uh and you're worried about ordering a pallet there is a ton of things that people do with these that don't don't want them engraved um for instance i sell these individually from here constantly and i'm right on the border of kentucky and tennessee i have the jack daniels distillery down here None of these are jack lids because they won't sell the stuff like this individually. Um, but, you know, you go to pallet, you have one with a really clean stamp. And this is just dusty. And a lot, a lot of times you'll get them cleaner. But you get one with a really clean stamp. You can clear coat it or not clear coat it. And charge $30 or $40 for a lid with a nice clean stamp. Uh, this one did say Knob Creek. It's not completely legible. But if it was... This James Beam, you know, it's got all the distillery info on it, the date, and what particular brand it is. People have man caves. People, you know, do their own things. There are several people who will buy a lid just like that, purely to hang it up in their man cave or their bar, or maybe their she shed. I don't know. Um, but people paint these. Uh, people do, I've had a lot of people who do like metal work who add metal to these and do some cool stuff. People make serving trays with them. You know, put a backing strip on them and a set of handles uh, and engrave it or paint it. You get a serving tray. Uh, the really nice flat ones you can make Lazy Susans out of. I've probably sold <laughs> 300 lids in the past four months purely to people just making Lazy Susans. Some of them wanted a good stamp. Some of them didn't care. They just... You know, they, there's so many things that can be done with these. Uh, you guys who are questioning a pallet, if these are not available in your area, you can resell them. <laughs> I promise you. There's Go on Facebook Marketplace and look up arts and crafts and look at all the crap people have for sale. I, there's people around here who sell 
windows out of old houses that they, you know, remodel or whatever. And I mean, they're old, like 1940s, 50s windows where if you flick them, they're going to break. And people buy that stuff and they paint them and they make cool stuff out of them. So don't underestimate what is capable with these lids. There are so many things you can do with them. I engrave half lids for people. Um, so even if you have a bad lid, take the bad side off. You got a half lid. These set beautifully on mantles, fireplaces, stuff like that. Um, I've had people put them on top of a custom mailbox before. It, there's so many things that can be done with them. Like I said, unless they're already available in your area, then, you know, obviously you probably should not buy a pallet from me since you can get them easily anyways, unless those people are marking them way up. But yeah, there is a billion things you can do. And all these lids are from three or four different pallets of what I have left over. I ship you guys out the better quality ones. These are ones I sell the most. These are rougher ones. I still have people coming by these. You'd be surprised. Don't think that, oh, you know, I might get 20, 30 bad lids out of 160. That's all going to go to waste. I've had, I have people buy these things from me to chop them up or chip them up and they use them for smoking, like, you know, for food, grill. These, these are all bourbon soaked. It's no different than going to the store and buying a bag of Jack Daniels wood chips. I mean, that's probably what it is. It's, it's barrel wood that they've cleaned up and shaved. And that's what you people are buying to smoke your, your steaks and stuff with. There's, there's a billion things that you can still do with these lids. There's nothing, you know, it, it's not a waste. It just, you got to use your mind, go on Pinterest, Etsy, see all the different things people are doing, see the things I'm doing. There's another guy on here. He's a nice guy. Talk to him. He sells lids also. Uh, he offers them planed and backed. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a billion things you can do with these. Uh, once again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, sorry, this video is ridiculously long. Just wanted to make sure I answered everything that everybody's asked. If you have questions, still ask me. It's not a problem. I always help anybody who asks. Um, but yeah, hopefully a lot of you guys are going to be in Florida. I'll see you down there. Look forward to meeting everybody and handing out a whole bunch of lids. I've got two fresh pallets in my trailer. 320 lids are coming with me to Florida. Um, and I'll see you guys down there. Thank you guys.